A couple spends their first night together only to discover that the night is anything but romantic as the paranormal make themselves known in the bedroom. That's today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. And 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. To share your real ghost stories with us, we would absolutely love to hear them. You can uh, write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And of course, supporting our program, you can do that in many ways. Leaving a review out there on Apple Podcasts or wherever you download podcasts, pressing the subscribe button. And uh, most importantly, becoming an extra podcast person in EPP. That's where you sign up to get all the bonus content. Brand new episodes every single week. More than 300 bonus episodes. You get advanced episodes of the show, commercial free. Video content, audio content, our uh, ebook, an Amazon bestseller. You get that. You also get our audio book, too. So lots of free stuff for you right away when you sign up to be an extra podcast person at ghostpodcast.com or through patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Tony and Carol Hughes joining you on today's episode of the program. And how are you doing this fine day? My friend Tony, how are you? I'm doing well. It's been a marathon day of shows. Me and Jen record. uh, This is a Monday that we're recording here. It's the 27th uh, of uh, April. And uh, we did all of our shows this afternoon. Took a small break. Then I just did a live uh, show with uh, Jim Harold and Jeff Belanger. Uh, and I took another small break and now I'm back here in the studio doing more shows. So, uh, I kind of like it that way. I kind of like just doing a whole day of recording rather than spreading it out throughout the week. So, <sighs> well, but you're also busy cause you're doing what I'm doing, doing this amongst the stacks of boxes. Yes, uh, there, exactly. <laughs> amongst flammable materials. So there's, uh, <laughs> there's boxes all over my studio right now. Extra know, large, like I'm medium. in the middle of a whole bunch, yeah. and I'm like feeling slightly cla- claustrophobic, but it's all good. It's all good. It is. I, I'm just ready to to get on the move, and by the time this thing airs, we actually will have been moved. But uh, it's uh, it's one of those things. I've become a pro at moving now, uh, but it's just you know, it, it's not fun every time you do it. There's just so many damn boxes that uh, are everywhere. And I've, I've gone throughout the house throughout the weekend and uh, packed things left and right and everything I think I can pack. And then there's some things where it's like, well, I got to wait till a little bit closer. And it's, you know, it's like phases of moving. But Well, and it's slightly, I'm going to say this. You have a lot to move. Yeah. But you've bought homes before. Mm-hmm. You know the process. And then there's me. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm like, what's going to fall apart? Am I packing for no good reason? (laughs) You know, it's like I've never bought a house. Good Lord, had I thought this through, I don't know if I would (laughs) have. First time is the hardest uh, because there's so many unknowns. But then once you kind of get it down, it's it's really not. It's I don't know. It's not as complicated as as you would think it would be the first time you do it, honestly. I thought it was this crazy thing, like, you can only do this once. And it's like, eh, no, I mean, it, it. no, you can do it more than once. It works. It's just a matter of how you want to do it. But, um, yeah, it, it's uh, moving is uh, is fun <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. I just want it to all happen. Because yeah. I'm in that point, you know, of self-doubt. Like, what if, mm-hmm. what if, what if this, what if that? What if this? Because then I go down a rabbit hole of home buying horror stories. Sure. Oh, there's a podcast for you. Yeah. Because it's like you think of all the things that could go wrong. I'm walking my dog tonight Googling crap. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what about this scenario? So I Google it to see if somebody else has Googled that before. You, you got to treat it like a medical condition. Don't Google it. You know, where <laughs> it's like, just don't it's Google just it. like a medical condition. Yeah. I can't stop. Yeah. You got to, you and have I to stop. I just want to look at WebMD for home buying. <laughs> 
Because there, there are certainly every random possibility that could happen. Are the odds there? Probably not. But, um, you know, it's like drug side effects. Like, does that have that side effect? Every drug could do any possible thing to you imaginable. <laughs> it's just, it's like, oh, you could grow a second or third arm. This is amazing. And I am the girl yeah. who would grow the third arm. <laughs> like, I have had the weird side effects. <laughs> Yeah, it's happened to me. Although I don't have three arms, just uh, but, just roll with it, and it okay. will it okay. will go okay. 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 Deep By breath. By next Monday, I should know. So yeah. the next episode, I should know. That'll be good. That'll be good. If I got that house, or if I'm gonna be renting some dump, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> on Stay the next tuned unsolved mystery episode of. <laughs> 855-853-4802 our phone number here at real ghost stories online to share your real ghost stories with us right in at real ghost stories online.com uh got letters today but let's start off the show with a call hi hi i'm calling to tell a story i have another one too but i'll tell it a separate time this particular story i was at my friend's house and i was sitting in their living room and i could see into their kitchen they were sitting across from me in the living room, so they couldn't see the exact spot I could see. So I'm sitting there and there's no windows open, no doors, no air conditioner on or fan. And there was a hand towel that was hanging over the back of the chair, you know, like next to the sink. And I'm looking at this hand towel and it's starting to lift up by itself. And, like, I wasn't even really sure if my eyes weren't deceiving me. So I'm watching this, and I'm looking around trying to see if there's some kind of way that there could be a draft. In the meantime, I couldn't even get any words or sound out of my mouth because this towel is lifting up, scrunching together in a deliberate motion like someone was drying their hands on it. And so I'm like pointing and trying to get it out. And my friend jumps up because he thinks that somebody's coming through the back door or something. And, you know, I go, you know, when I, you know, and then it comes back down. It was just the same motion as somebody had been doing the dishes, turned around, lifted up, you know, the part of the towel that's hanging down, dried their hands, and then it went back down. Exactly that motion, a deliberate motion. And he goes, oh, I thought someone was coming through the back door. And I said, no. I go, that towel just lifted up in a deliberate motion, scrunched together like someone dried their hands. And I literally, like, was starting to cry because the thought that a ghost could touch something solid kind of made me realize that they could, if they wanted to, pick something up and throw it at you. But he said, oh, no, that's just my brother, David. He died a few months ago, and I took that from his apartment. Whenever he's around that dream catcher, and he pointed to a big dream catcher that was hanging above his stairs, will turn. And just as he said it, the dream catcher turned in two full circles and stopped. And that's my story. But I just thought that it was very strange that a towel lift it up in a deliberate motion and that right there I think was the you know the the whole end all the end all on any skepticism <laughs> whatever you know like being skeptic of believing in ghosts that ended that because seeing something move on its own accord a solid object really was shocking. Anyway, have a great day. Bye. Skepticism is the word she was looking for, but it is an interesting thing where you have that moment of saying, oh, this can manipulate something physical in our world. It, it, it opens up those possibilities of, well, what else can it manipulate? What else does it have the power to do? And that's kind of a scary thing to think about. Well, especially when you're sitting there watching it happen. Yeah. It's one thing if you, you know, like when we were kids and we would leave and come back and everything's different. 
So someone was in the house moving stuff around, but we didn't see it. Yeah. You know, like my neighbor saw it from her house into my bedroom window. You know, but I didn't. I saw some things, but not like, you know, things being moved across the room. But if you're sitting there watching it happen, that's some scary shit. What did your neighbor see exactly? Well, that one time um, I was at her house and from her family room, you could see my house, the side of my house, and you could see my bedroom on the second floor. And Brenda knew that It'd be cool if she was listening because I've been trying to find her for years, but she would know if this, if she would know I'm talking about her. Yeah. But, um, so she's, we're at my grandma's house for the weekend. So there's nobody there in the house. And she saw someone go in my bedroom. The light came on and someone sat on my bed and there was nobody home. Yeah. So it could have been an intruder in my town of 1000 people, <laughs> but you know, with all this stuff that was going on, yeah. she's like, you know, when you were gone this weekend, someone came in your room and sat on your bed. And I was probably 10. Yeah. Like, God, dang it. Of course it did. You know, because when you're that age, you know, you would just want to have a regular happy house. Sure. You know, but to sit there and watch that happen. And then it's interesting to me that the brother or the friend is like, yeah, that's what happens when my brother's around. And then the dream catcher turns, and then it turned. That's so interesting to me that it would be so common for the brother to be like, yeah, that's what happens when he's around. And cue dream catcher. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what's weird. Like, if I lost a sibling, I think every time that would happen, I would be bawling. Sure. Like, oh, you're here. Yeah. I miss you so much. <laughs> I would turn into that person. Yeah. I wouldn't be like, yeah, no, wait for the dream catcher. <laughs> but I mean, it's cool. It is. And it, it It'd just, be cool if I could be that calm and cool about stuff like that, but I'm not. It certainly shows the connection of what is going on in a very clear and concise way. But it sounds to me like that. I mean, that you can tell by the way she told the story that that just really impacted her. Yeah. He's cool about it. She's more like me. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I I wonder if, it, like, over time, you just, you know, that gets better or it's easier to deal with or, you know, or, or it's just a... And at a point, I don't know if it was one of my siblings and, you know, I really felt like it was them visiting me. Like, what if it stopped? Mm -hmm. I don't... And then, like, then what? Yeah. I, I'd be like... I just wish you would come back and move the towel again. <laughs> Turn the dream catcher twice. Yeah. You know, so I just think it's interesting to me that he's super cool about it. It is. Thank you for uh, for sharing that story with us. Our phone number is 855-853-4802. To share your real ghost story with us or uh, write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. Let's go to a letter. Uh, it says, uh, hey, Tony, Jenny, and Carol. My name is Sam. This is the first time I'm writing in, although I've been an avid listener since 2014. I've had plenty of paranormal experiences throughout my life, but in this letter, I'll be telling you of the experiences I've had since meeting my boyfriend. There's one thing you should know about me before this first story. I wouldn't consider myself to be a talented empath or anything, but when there's something paranormal around me, I begin to get a gut feeling that something is there and I can feel what emotion this thing is giving off. I can also do this with people very easily. Weird, I know. My boyfriend and I lived about a half hour away from each other. He lived in a small town in Wisconsin called Pepin. After a few weeks of dating, I spent the night. We were both lying in his bed, facing a different way, my head by his feet and vice versa. He was lying so he could see this door. I was lying the other way, facing the window, so we could lie down and still talk. We talked for hours and never felt anything until around 2 or 3 a.m. I felt like something was standing right behind me. I started to get a gut feeling and I started to sense that whatever this thing was, was angry that I was there. My boyfriend asked what was wrong, must have gotten fidgety, looking behind me. I simply asked if he believed in the paranormal. After he said yes, I immediately told him something does not want me here. 
He looked a little confused or shocked, and he began telling me that in his mother's room down the hall beside her bed was his grandparents' ashes, and sometimes he'd feel like he was being watched in the apartment. As someone who has been able to speak with the paranormal openly, I sat up and faced the angry energy behind me and simply said, I'll treat your grandson with respect. I promise I'm not going to hurt him or you. The energy instantly went away. My boyfriend went outside for a smoke and I decided to stay in the room since it was so late to try and go to sleep. As I was lying in the bed, I felt cold breathing on my neck and a warm hand on my head. I was frozen. I quickly turned around and saw nothing as I figured I uh, would uh, since I did not see her before. Since that night, she has not touched me, but I often feel her watching eyes on me when I'm with my boyfriend there. His grandma is not the only spirit that resides in the apartment. I suffer from sleep paralysis and night terrors because of some traumatic events in my life. I'll write about and about my sleep paralysis later. That's a long story in itself. Anyway, I was spending the night at my boyfriend's and his mother was spending the night at her friend's house. So it was just us in the apartment all night. I woke up from a night terror. I did not want to wake my boyfriend up because I knew it was late. Got up, grabbed my jacket, and I was going to go outside for a cigarette to calm down. When you walk out of his room, to the right is the bathroom. Two bedrooms down, a short wall. If you go left, it opens to the kitchen and the living room. The apartment was pitch black. And I walked out of this room, flicked my lighter on so I could see where I was going. And as soon as you turn left and look ahead of the living room, the wall across the apartment, there's a glowing red electrical clock. Clock read 333. As soon as I looked up at the clock and walked further down the hall, I felt this heavy, evil energy surrounding me. I knew something was watching me, and I was hoping if I could walk quickly through there enough, then I'd feel relief outside. I was dead wrong. I stepped outside, lit my cigarette, and looked up for the first time as a single street lamp hanging lonely over the quiet, dark road. Under the lamp, I saw a tall, black shadow man. Even though he was about 40 yards away from me, I could tell he was staring straight at me. He did not have a face or much of any features or color, just a black hole in the general shape of a cloaked man. I sat down on the stool right outside the door and just smoked my cigarette and watched it. I watched it for about a minute before I heard something excessively big stomping along the sidewalk just around the corner of the apartment building. I dropped my cigarette and ran inside and locked the door. I could still hear the footsteps running up to the door and then they stopped as suddenly as they'd started. I ran back into the bedroom and turned the TV on to fall asleep. I did eventually fall asleep. I do not know how. I have plenty of other stories that I'll write in about later. Sorry this was so long. Keep up the good work. Until next time, Sam, what's your thoughts on all of that? There's a lot there. Yeah. Number one, if you think grandma is watching you, I don't think you could ever have, you know, relations with anybody. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, well, I'd love to, honey, but. I think Nana's oh. watching. Like, I, I can't imagine, like, I could ever let that get out of my brain. Yeah. It would be the whole time. Now, men, that's different. He probably doesn't even think about that. But as women. No, I, like, I, I think men would think me. a lot of men would she's be like. Me. I can't imagine that idea where it's like, oh, hi, Grandma. Just uh, hope you don't mind. No, that would just be weird. (laughs) It's just weird. So I don't know. I'd almost be like, you know, I think the world of you, you're a terrific boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I need you to move. You need your own place without your grandparents' ashes down the hall. Grandma can't be watching us get it on. (laughs) Like we're done with that. Yeah, so, but it sounds like she's someone who's super in tune with that. Like, we were talking before we started about people, my sister, Mm -hmm. who is really like that, too. You know, I think that some people, no matter where they are, where they live, they will always have that. And I think it's one of those things that's a blessing and a curse at the same time. I think it could be a blessing, but it could also be scary as shit. Yeah. Like when you go outside to have a smoke and there he is standing underneath the streetlight. Yeah. Like that would scare me because 
outside's the place where you always want to get to. You know, it's mm-hmm. like in the, in your dreams that you're always running outside. You're safe. Yeah, like where you're safe. And when I was a kid in that house, like if I could get outside, it can't get me there. Yeah. But you got outside. Then I'd be like, shit, this shit can follow me anywhere. And then they are standing outside the street. Like, what would be the weirdest part of the story is if they're like, I don't like that grandma is watching us in the bedroom. And he's like, well, when grandma was alive, that was one of her favorite things to do. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. That would be and the. Then uh, there was my grandpa. He liked to hang out <laughs> below the street light. Oh, God. Sometimes he'd hide underneath the bed with the camcorder, you know, <laughs> one of those giant VHS ones, though. So it was really kind of awkward. I'd be like, you're a terrific boyfriend, oh, but. God. Yeah. Your grandma has got to go. And I mean that respectfully. And I thought maybe, you know, when she kind of had that little conversation with her, saying, you know, I'm going to treat mm-hmm. your grandson with respect and. I thought I thought the the story is going to be like, and then Grandma left us alone. Mm-hmm. But no, she's a grandma. <laughs> That's what they do. Grandma knows best. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. I can scare her off. I understand the frustration that they're going through. So. Well, and the problem is for this poor guy, like no one's ever going to live up to what his grandma wants. No. So he's going to terrify. She's going to terrify all of them. Mm -hmm. He's got to move. Without the ashes. They stay. Well, is grandma attached to the ashes or is grandma attached to him? Yeah, I think there's a conversation he needs to have. You know. Time to exercise grandma. grandma. I love you so much, but come on. I'm not. Well, unless his story, like they were 14 at the time. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm assuming they were grown adults yeah you know and it's like you gotta trust me to make my own decisions you can't <laughs> be in my bedroom at night grandma <laughs> it's just, it's just creepy, creepy and wrong yeah <laughs> yeah that yeah. gotta do something there thanks for uh, writing in that story 855-853-4802 is our number at real ghost stories online to share your real ghost stories with us Next one says, hi, my name is Rolando. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. Just started listening to the podcast. Love what y'all do for the paranormal community. I do not remember exactly how old I was when this happened, but when I was in the middle in, in middle school, I lived in Phoenix, Arizona. Me and my family moved into a new house. It was way bigger than the apartment we lived in. It was me, my parents, my sister, uncle, and my twin brother. Me, my uncle and brother shared what used to be the garage that they turned into a room. At first, the house seemed normal, but then after almost a month passed, me and my siblings started having weird experiences. We all heard footsteps at night all over the house in what sounded like some heavy footsteps in the attic. We told my mom what was happening, and she says we were probably having nightmares because we would watch a scary TV show called A Haunting. Uh, One night, me, my brothers, and uncle were about to go to sleep, We had just turned off the lights and then something hit the curtains hard. I quickly asked my uncle, did you hear that? He turned the lights on and the curtains were still swinging. I saw my uncle's face turn pale white and he said, it's okay, probably the air conditioning. Then he says to me and my brother, they can sleep in the bed with him if we're scared. I do not know if he was worried we were scared or if he was scared to sleep alone that night. Then one day, out of nowhere, my dad brings our dog inside on a leash because he said there was a huge rat messing around with the cabinets. But I'm sure there was something going on. The dog started barking at the corner in the room and my dad threw her out and told us to go to bed. On another occasion, I'd fallen asleep on the floor and woke up suddenly in the middle of the night. I investigated the hallway for some reason and there was a shadow that looked like a person on all fours. I could not see the face, but I could tell it was looking directly at me. I thought it was my sister. So I called to it. It did not answer. So I quickly hid under the cover. I stayed like that for at least 30 minutes, too terrified to look up. When I finally thought it went away, I peeked from under the covers, and this thing was still staring daggers at me. I don't know how I fell asleep that night. The next morning, I asked my sister if that was her trying to scare me last night, and she said she was passed out. We did not stay too long in the house because my parents got a divorce and my mom took us to live in Texas with my grandma. I was sad that they split up, but at the same time, I was relieved to leave the house. When we were a little bit older, we all shared our separate encounters in that house. 
The only one who ever experienced something was my mom. I think it's because we were children and my dad was an alcoholic and druggy. A couple years ago, I was on the phone with my dad and I asked him if he ever saw or heard anything weird in that house. He told me he'd hear the footsteps in the attic and he'd see what they thought was a black dog. I told him of the black figure on all fours that I saw and we think it was the same thing. Tell me what you guys think. I love your show. You guys are amazing. Wish you guys all the best. I would agree. I think that they, you know, they probably did see the same thing. The black figure on all fours. He thought it was a dog. They didn't know what it was, but it sounds very, very similar. Okay, so here's what freaks me out. Yeah. Because I'm trying to buy a house. What if I buy a house that has a black figure on mm-hmm. all fours in it? <laughs> I'm like, what if that happens? Well, there is the clause. Like they just moved to that house. There's that clause in all real estate deals that if you have shadow people in your house... It's like a lemon law. You can get out of it in like 48 hours. I'm kidding. You're screwed. (laughs) That's the answer. You're screwed. There's no way out of it. So uh, it's more so like if you have something like that, try and reason with it. I mean, you've been doing the show long enough. Uh, I I just don't want that to happen. Best practices. Yeah. The best thing about what that story is that they were able to move and get out of there. Because we talk about that all the time. Like, Mm -hmm. People move into a house and you can't like say in my case, if that was to happen, yeah, it won't, but say you're there. You can't just move. No, you know, you do a little research. There's that died in house website. Have you done that? No, you can do that. They can check and see if anyone died in your house. Um, and then it's just kind of historically looking at where is the land and all that. We did all that. We're not on the trail of tears. We're not on a battlefield. Now, I did talk to the guy across the street, David, yeah. who has lived in the neighborhood for more than 40 years, and he loves it there. He loves that neighborhood. Mm-hmm. He knows everybody. So he he's real excited about me moving in, so there's that. <laughs> Except when you get there, you're going to talk to your neighbors about David, and they're going to be like, David died eight years ago. (laughs) What? (laughs) You've been talking to him? David. Oh, my God. David. Yeah, he did. It was in that fiery accident. (laughs) We actually have a joke going on right now with our house that we're going to be getting into here, where... And I talked about this. I, I don't know if I talked about it with you on the show or I sh- certainly should have if I haven't. But when we were there, did I tell you about the Border Collie? No. Okay. Um, so we, uh, first time we were there looking at the house, um, we go through the whole house and we just know like, okay, this is the one we want. Um, but we're on the back porch is kind of overlooking the pasture and all that. And there's this border collie that's kind of off in the distance. It kind of runs over to us, kind of timid, and like gets down and then sees us and then runs up. And he's kind of got a little bit of a limp. And it looks exactly like uh, Jen's dog from childhood um, that she talks very fondly about that she loved when she lived out in the country as a kid. And... This dog comes up and is just so kind and loving and sweet. It's like, well, that's really neat. And we both were kind of like, this is probably like a sign, you know, like, you know, just it was just so perfect. Just silly how this dog was same limp, same look, same everything. Um, So that was that. Then uh, we go back there uh, for the inspection And the dog's like waiting for us at the end of the driveway. He's just sitting there. And we don't know who the dog belongs to, if it belongs to the house that we're buying or if it's one of the other three houses that are kind of off in that acreage as well. Because there's like four houses that are there on like, I don't know, probably like 20 some acres. Um, And they all kind of are, they got a lot of space between them. And it could be anybody's dog. Um, So he's real friendly and all that. And I said, this is the weird part. Like, what if we get there and we ask, you know, one of the neighbors, like, so whose border collie was that? You know, was that the the previous owners? And people would be like, oh, that border collie died eight years ago. You know, it's like, I would not honestly be the least bit surprised if that is the answer that we get. 
I mean, he seems like a normal dog. I petted the dog. It's not translucent, not running through walls, but it's just kind of... But it is kind of crazy that Jen had a dog that looked just like that. Exactly. When they lived on a farm. I like to think of it as a really great sign. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm going to have a ghost anything, a ghost border collie would be great. Yeah. That and I can pet. So we're just kind of looking at it and, and we're hoping that it's one of the neighbor's dogs so that it's still there and comes over and hangs out. Because also while we were there, there was like a a husky mix that wandered through the field to say hi to us too. And I don't know whose dog that was, but they were, it's just like kind of out in the farm, you know, there's just kind of neighborhood dogs that just kind of wander around and take care of stuff. And uh, they were just friendly as heck, but we don't know whose dog is whose. And I, I hope the border collie is someone else's, so it's still around because it was just really friendly. And it, it, that's crazy. Yeah. So, but well, I have David, and you have a border collie. Yeah. So we'll wait to see who's the ghost. <laughs> in a, David or the border collie, or both of them in a week or two. <laughs> Maybe you can help solve a mystery. I get a little Robert Stack going on in here. Anyway, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the program, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person, EPP. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get all the extra stuff and keep us on the air. Until next time, for Carol and Tony, thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online. <laughs>